Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Monday, February the 10th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, mayors against illegal guns lose nearly 50 members after plans for gun confiscation are exposed. Then, Obama wants more drone strikes against Americans. And the TSA humiliates another victim. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. We had them sneaking around in secret meetings with the plan to register the guns, to confiscate them, to violate the civil rights of all Americans. Well, there's no doubt that the real agenda of gun control is outright confiscation. We see this from time to time surface. We see lies, we see semantics, we see people being trained to fear gun owners and both members of the public and members of the military. Now we have revelations from a mayor who was inside Bloomberg's group, Mayors Against Illegal Guns, the most well-financed and arguably the most influential of the gun control groups. He's come out as a whistleblower talking about what the real agenda is. This story from Kit Daniels, mayor says nationwide gun confiscation is the goal of Mayors Against Illegal Guns. This is the mayor of Poughkeepsie. He says this group was simply a vehicle for Bloomberg to promote his personal gun control agenda. And under the guise of helping mayors facing a crime and drug epidemic, MAIG intended to promote confiscation of guns from law-abiding citizens. Alex Jones has more information. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here with an emergency Second Amendment alert. If you get this information out to everyone you know, and if we force the pro gun press to cover this, this can be a major blow against the victim disarmament crowd who all have their own bodyguards and armored compounds like Mayor Bloomberg and of course Michael Moore. This is the political elite that seek to disarm their quarry. Ladies and gentlemen, a major mayor in New York State who was in on the Mayors Against Gun Violence meetings run by Handgun Control Incorporated, the Brady Center, and others, with Mayor Bloomberg, came out and said he left the group because the plan is not, quote, sensible gun control, but registration and then confiscation. Now, I know that most of you out there already know that's their plan. They've done it all over the world. They've done it in New York City, Chicago, anywhere they're in control. But ladies and gentlemen, this is a major blow against them right now because it shows their treachery. Now, remember, the mayor pro tem in Austin, Mike Martinez, last year made national news at a gun rally that we caught on tape. When people had signs saying no gun ban, he said, hey, after we register, we will confiscate. He's part of Bloomberg's national deal right here in Austin, Texas. So just like I told you the Copenhagen documents on global warming being fake and a power grab, just like I told you five years ago that was huge, and we pushed it out there, you pushed it out there, and it literally was like a Death Star being blown up event for the globalist empire, the corporatist, the monopoly men. This can be as big because it shows their plan, as Feinstein said, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in when they say, we're for your guns, just let us register them. Don't have private sales, just let us have a record. We don't, we'll never take them, we'll never take them. Again, this shows the general public they fooled how it's disingenuous. Here is the article right here, ladies and gentlemen. It is so incredibly, so incredibly important. Uh, mayor, nationwide gun confiscation is goal of mayors against illegal guns. The New York mayor says that he left the group over confiscation plans run by this literal seditious subverter. There's the uh, mayor pro tem saying they're gonna confiscate the guns after they register in Austin that we caught on tape. This story at InfoWars.com needs to go mega viral, ladies and gentlemen, right now. Right now. Now, I'm taking off the radio show today to be with family who's in town. David Knight's doing the show, coming up in just about an hour and a half. Spread the word, InfoWars.com, the audio streams, and, and get this article and get it out to everyone you know. This is huge because it shows their deceit, their sneakiness, the manipulation. We're also going to air this special report on the radio today for everybody before David Knight breaks down all the proof. But this is a big deal. It shows the treachery, the sneakiness, the underhandedness, the deceit. It discredits them, folks, just like Obamacare is a proven scam and a fraud written by these same offshore banks. They are looting us, and they don't want us to ever politically be able to take our country back. They want to use force on us, their homeland security, so they're moving to disarm us because, as the UN has said, 
Civilian ownership of firearms threatens the legitimate power monopoly of the state. Well, that's called a dictatorship, and it's not legitimate. So again, ladies and gentlemen, there, there is the article right there. Please, please, please get it out to everyone you know. It is so incredibly important that, that, that we don't just let this opportunity to expose these rascals go by the wayside. It is so essential that you get this article out to everyone you know. It's up on InfoWars.com. And remember, if you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance. We can beat these people. <sighs> this is a big deal. Spread the word, folks. They're coming for our guns. Be the Paul Revere of the 21st century. You are. In the same article, the mayor of Poughkeepsie pointed out that there's 50 other mayors who have left the group for the same reason. Nearly 50 mayors have jumped ship on former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg's Mayors Against Illegal Guns campaign. He says, I've left the organization for the same reason I did. Now, in another update to fluoride, we see that yet another Harvard study. Remember, there was a Harvard study that came out that showed that it lowered IQ rates in China. Well, now what they've done is they've looked at a combination of IQ studies. And they find that on average, it is lowering IQ by seven IQ points. In a metadata analysis, Researchers from Harvard School of Public Health and China have for the first time combined 27 studies and found strong indications that fluoride may adversely affect cognitive development in children. Based on the findings, they say that this risk should not be ignored. And this is the thing that they found, the mechanism that they found from one lady's PhD paper. This was Jennifer Luke. She wrote in her 2001 scientific article that was part of her PhD dissertation, she said that the fluoride accumulates in the brain specifically around the pineal gland. So that's something to be concerned about. We can try to wake up different city councilors, state governments to make them stop putting this in the water. We're forced to pay for it. And when you see something come out like this, you have to ask yourself, how can they justify mass medication in the water supply? Because when you do that, you're getting a very different dosage for people by just dumping it into the water supply. You cannot control the dosage. And the dosage, even if it were safe and effective, and it's not safe or effective, but even if it were, the dosage would be different for a person who is an adult male versus a child versus a fetus. How do you control that? Well, you can't if you just dump medication in the water. We should never accept forced medication that way. Unfortunately, we cannot roll it back as easily as we would like, so you need to take control of your own health. You need to try to protect yourself and your family. One of the ways you can do that is with iodine. Now we see in another case from the TSA, they're still coming after people at the airport when they know that there is no threat from either terrorist at the airport or at airplanes, and they've admitted this in their own internal documents. We've seen that come out from John Corbett, We've seen it confessed in the blog of the former TSA agent. Now this time they actually humiliated a man who has been a cancer victim by saying he's wearing a diaper. Totally humiliated the man. That's what this is all about. It's about not only taking away our freedom, but our dignity. And they continue to do that. Now the Supreme Court is also possibly going to consider two cases that are coming up, both of them touching on what does it mean to actually bear arms? We've had the Supreme Court clearly identify that it is a personal right. That's what they mean by right of the people. This really isn't that hard. It's really pretty easy, actually. It's only when you try to prevaricate and argue over semantics that it gets complicated, when they try to muddy the water. Now they're trying to argue that, yes, you can have guns, but you can only have them inside your house. You know, go get in the closet. Lock yourself in the closet. This is a civil rights issue. This is an issue where gun owners need to come out of the closet. And so it looks like these two cases, one of them at least may come before the Supreme Court. They say the explicit guarantee of the right to bear arms would mean nothing if not protecting the right to bear arms outside of the home, says the NRA. The most fundamental canons of construction forbid any interpretation that would discard this language as meaningless surplus. And then they point out in this Wall Street Journal article that the federal government wants the Supreme Court to take a pass. That's right. We don't want to actually look at this too carefully because it is so blazingly obvious what it means. And if they look at it carefully, they might also then start to look at what infringe means. And they might actually start to roll back 
some of these things like the New York SAFE Act that were just put in, which is an obvious infringement that also is going to go to a court challenge this year. Now, we've seen this over and over again, and yet we've had yet another revelation of how they're going to use false flag events, how they're training the military to perceive gun owners, especially those who talk out about the Second Amendment, those who are talking about limited government, those who oppose Obama politically, they are increasingly seen as terrorists, and the military is being trained to treat us as such. We see in this article from Kurt Nemo today, gun owners are considered to be racist terrorists who poison school children. Now, he points out last January, we pointed out that they were having a safety exercise in Portsmouth, Ohio. We reported on it, and we knew at the time that it was going to be a premise of individuals who are disgruntled over the government's interpretation of the Second Amendment. Now another organization, Media Trackers, has gotten a, under a Freedom of Information request, they've gotten the actual scenario documents, and it's pretty amazing to see what they put in there. As Kurt Nemo points out, on the chalkboard, this is a teacher who was a terrorist who was cooking up ricin and mustard gas, and on the chalkboard they found, as well as the tables, there were several statements about protecting gun rights and Second Amendment rights. Yes, and at the time it was happening, look at how the local media reported this. They said, although this is a make-believe scenario, it's timely. Two school employees disgruntled over the government's interpretation of the Second Amendment plot to use chemical, biological, and radiological agents against members of the local community. Now, it's interesting that media trackers contacted Ohio National Guard, talked to the communications director there, and he suggested that they were inferring something that wasn't in the documents instead of talking about what was actually in the report. So they read him excerpts from the report and asked him why it wasn't relevant that conservatives would feel unduly targeted by their scenario. And he just said, okay, I'm going to stop you right there. Have a good day. Now, these are the documents, the FOIA request documents. And inside the documents, they actually put in a CNN article just so the National Guard would understand politically where these horrible guys are coming from. Now, the CNN article that they put in, why the NRA won't talk gun control with Obama, and this is from 2011. In this article, CNN is portraying the NRA as being these totally inflexible guys who won't talk to Obama, who won't consider any kind of reasonable compromise on the Second Amendment. And Wayne LaPierre says, why should I sit down with a bunch of people who spent their lives trying to destroy the Second Amendment? Exactly. Because you have to be inflexible when people are trying to compromise the Second Amendment. It's an absolute. It's a fundamental right. It's something that we had before the Constitution, apart from the Constitution, the Constitution merely recognizes that and restricts the government. But, of course, anybody that puts stuff like that on their blackboard as a teacher, they have to understand, the National Guard has to understand why that person is a category for a person who is a terrorist. And we've seen this before. We saw this in 2009 with the MIAC report, the Fusion report that came out right after Obama was elected. And, of course, anybody who is a political opponent of him, that would be Ron Paul, Bob Barr, Chuck Baldwin, anybody who would really oppose him. Of course, that wouldn't include, uh, that would include John McCain because essentially they see everything, all the issues exactly the same. McCain is just an older, whiter version of Obama. But anybody that was a real political opponent of his, anybody that had a bumper sticker about them, they were labeled as terrorists. And then we saw in 2010, there was an army scenario about an uprising in Darlington, South Carolina, where they talked about homegrown terrorists. Now, of course, these are people who were Tea Party activists who had taken over Darlington, South Carolina, because, again, they weren't happy with the government's interpretation of the Second Amendment. So they were extremists. They were right wing. They were Tea Party. We didn't learn about that 2010 training scenario until August of 2012 when they started talking about that in, a, in an article in the Small Wars Journal. Now, that was a retired colonel and a history professor. The colonel is still teaching at Fort Leavenworth. But then they told us, don't worry, we're not singling out conservatives, gun owners for persecution or Christians. It was just a few months after that that they had this training scenario in January of last year, which we're now just getting the full FOIA request on. But again, in the meantime, just this last December, we had someone who was a history professor at West Point, at the U.S. Military Academy for the Army, teaching history. And he wrote an article in Esquire, if you'll remember, where he talked about how he was going to pry from your cold, dead fingers your firearms. 
He says, I hope that you're already dead because we're going to win the information war. We're going to train people. We're going to rewrite history for them, essentially, so that through education, we can take away anybody's right to own guns and say that that's simply a right of the state, a right not of the people. That was the whole thrust of his article. That is what the army is training on. That's what they're training the police about. That's why we're concerned when we see a shoot up of a transmission station, electrical transmission station that is very carefully executed, very professionally done, but very carefully and limited way. And then they don't tell anybody about it, but now they're starting to tell people about it. Who are they going to finger as the suspect in this? Michael Savage has talked about false flags. Glenn Beck even thought they were setting him up back in 2010. It's anybody who has real political opposition and their supporters. Going back to this Esquire article, when he says, we will pry your gun from your cold, dead fingers because I'm willing to wait until you die, hopefully of natural causes. See, that's why these guys hang out in the history departments at the military colleges, because those who control the past control the future. And that is a direct threat, just like the threat we got from Mike Martinez when the people held up, stop the gun ban. He said, we're not going after that right now, but hang on to that sign because we're going to make that sign come true. We understand their threats. They're very serious. They're very dangerous. They're directed at any serious political opposition. They're going to try to take the guns. We take it seriously. You should take it seriously as well. Now, in other news, we have an update on the Fast and Furious scandal. Fox News points out that the first de defendant in the Brian Terry murder is being sentenced today, Monday. And Fast and Furious questions still linger. Yeah, one of those is why aren't Janet Napolitano and Eric Holder in the dock for criminal charges? But Fox News puts it this way. They say a Mexican man will be sentenced in federal court Monday in the killing of U.S. Border Patrol agent whose death revealed a botched law enforcement sting. That's putting it pretty mildly. Even the New York Times said it was a false flag directed at the Second Amendment to try to demonize the Second Amendment. And, of course, they wanted to use that as a pretext to show that there was a need to control the flow of arms across the border. And in order to do that, you have to register all guns, all ammunition. Now, today, Obama is seeking to legitimize a drone strike against U.S. citizens. This is an article from Kurt Nemo. He says the Justice Department is currently working with the Obama administration to make a case for attacking unidentified Americans. That's a quote from the Obama administration. Remember when we used to have to have a reason and legal authority before the government killed somebody, especially American citizens? But they also point out a memo released by the Justice Department claims that the government has the right, this is quote, has the right to kill U.S. citizens if they pose an imminent threat. You have to understand that this is the same government that in the NDAA, Section 1021, said that they could do that, that they could hold people indefinitely without trial by the military because they had an authorization for the use of military force. And that authorization declared the entire world as a war zone. That includes the domestic continental United States. We are, in their eyes, in a war zone. And it doesn't matter to them whether we're American citizens or not. And if they get away with these drone strikes, killing American citizens abroad, just as they kill others abroad in assassinations, they will do it here on domestic soil. It's just a matter of time. And speaking of the war in Afghanistan, senators are now seeking a vote on an open-ended Afghan war. This is reported from antiwar.com. They say the Afghan war will nominally end the end of December this year, at least for campaigning purposes. U.S. troops, however, will remain there and in combat roles, quote, through 2024 and beyond, according to a bilateral security agreement that they're now pushing for Afghanistan to sign. Now, get this. This agreement is billed as a, quote, executive agreement between our executive regime leader and the Afghan president. So it's just those two presidents. And they say here that they don't have to have parliamentary approval. That would not be necessary. Now, one person who's pushing back against Obama's executive orders in this area is Senator Jeff Merkley, a Democrat of Oregon. He says he was critical of the lack of a vote, saying that it amounted to putting the, quote, military on autopilot. Yeah, we've got uh, the year of action that's coming from Barack Obama. How about a decade of action? They don't want to leave an area that is so profitable for the American government. They have taken poppies and they've gone from less than 10 percent of the world supply for heroin and other poppy-based opiates, they have now taken that to 90% of the world's supply. It is vital for them to stay there. They also control lithium in Afghanistan. They have most of the supply on that, and you know they use that in batteries.
That is why we're there. It's not about terrorism. They're terrorizing the people of Afghanistan, and they're going to be terrorizing Americans if we don't stop it. Now, in another article, it says, lights out for the NSA. In Maryland, lawmakers are pushing to cut water, electricity to the spy agency headquarters. This is the nerve center in Fort Meade that's targeted by this bill. This is eight Republicans out of the 141-member Maryland House of Delegates. Now, it's interesting to remember that this has been proposed, especially started in Utah, where the Utah Data Center is, and people there were pointing out the massive amounts of water that were being used to cool that facility in an area where water is very dear, very scarce. But no legislation was introduced there. However, in Arizona, California, Tennessee, Washington, and other states, bills have been introduced into the state legislatures that model the Tenth Amendment Center's movement here. Now, Eric Holder has been recorded telling people that it's his intention to brainwash the public about guns, to make them very afraid. Now, this next person we're talking to, Derek Poe of Golden Triangle Tactical in Beaumont, Texas, had that happen to him. In his store, in a mall, he had his gun taken away from him because people said they were terrified. They were afraid they were going to die just by seeing someone hold a gun. But this is also a case of First Amendment protection because as he moved to his new location and was advertising his store opening, he had that shut down in a manner similar to what happened to the InfoWars crew in Dallas. So this is both the First and the Second Amendment. We are not going to be put in the closet either as gun owners or as protesters. We have a right to be out in public to engage in these legal, constitutionally protected activities. And we want to talk to him and find out what happened in Houston. Now, you're moving locations from a mall, and this is your grand opening at the new location. Tell us why you left the mall. We left the mall right after they put the, uh, the 30 6 sign up on the door. We mainly left. We're not going to subject our employees and all our customers to unsafe working environment, which is what a gun-free zone is, which is what the mall became. Now, you had been hassled by the mall back in December 28th when they arrested you or gave you, actually, they, they confiscated your gun, didn't they? The police did. Well, they didn't arrest me at the time, but they did confiscate my gun. They didn't even, they didn't issue a citation, nothing. They just, all they did was stole my firearm. They said that you were carrying it in a manner calculated to alarm. You had it slung over your back, as you report? Right, yeah, slung over my back, the barrel facing down. I even had items in my hand. So it's it very clear and apparent that I wasn't going to do anything illegal, and I was wearing my work uniform for a tactical store in that very mall. Right, and so you've got a store in the mall. You're walking legally carrying, uh, openly carrying a, a uh, rifle that's slung over your back, and yet because some witnesses say that they are terrified, one of them said they thought they were going to die. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they called the police, and the police took your, took your weapon, and then the mall put up signs prohibiting uh, gun carry. Is that what you're saying with the 30 6 sign? Yes, sir. So they put up a 30 6 sign like a, a week later. Mm -hmm. So you decide that you're going to... So, so you decide that you're going to move to a location outside of the mall. You had your right. grand opening this last weekend, and you had somebody standing out by the road, as we see businesses doing all the time, with a sign waving to the location. In this particular instance, the guy was wearing a banana suit, and he had an AK-47 slung over his shoulder, which is legal. Right, yeah. And uh, we put him in a banana suit, figured uh, he'd look a little bit less alarming this time, you know. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Evidently, people were afraid of that as well, or the police were hassling it. Now, in between these two incidents, between the time that uh, you had the incident at the mall and between this incident with your grand opening this weekend, there was an open carry rally in Beaumont. Tell us about that. Yeah, there's, uh, there's one actually a week ago after after this open carry event and and it's funny because the cops were pretty mad at why he should be open carrying and that was one of the arguments i was making when i walked down there to help out my employee who's getting uh, illegally detained i say y'all helped us open carry a week ago you know and the cop was like it was basically saying that's different that's because we had police there and if you people just open carry it'd be like somalia is what he told me well, you know, what we saw when we went to an open carry rally at the Alamo in San Antonio was that at the rally, when there was about a thousand people there openly carrying, legally carrying firearms strapped over their back, 
the police stood their distance. They took pictures of everybody constantly, but they didn't harass anybody. But as soon as it dwindled down to just a few people left, most of the people had gone home. They started hassling gun owners again for open carry that is legal in Texas. Right. Yeah, it, it, it's, and it's also what we've seen here with this limitation of people standing off of the road. I don't know what the laws there are in Beaumont, but we've had a lot of problems in Dallas as well. We were up there protesting. The InfoWars crew was protesting the fact that they were trying to shut down free speech centered around the JFK 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination. They didn't want people really talking about it outside of their official dog and pony show. So they had a lot of free speech limitations that were based on this idea that you're going to distract traffic. And now Dallas has kind of doubled down on that. They now have a 75 foot setback from the road. Is your store even 75 feet back from the road? No, it's right along the main highway. Yeah, so you probably, in many cases, people, in a practical manner, they don't have that much of a setback anyway. But it's not any more distracting to have somebody standing out in front of a, a store waving a sign that the store is having a no, special or grand exactly. opening. They, they do it all the time. Several companies do it. There's a place called Liberty Tax. That's a woman dressed Statue of Liberty that does it. Mm -hmm. They have a, a mattress company that does it. Little Caesars, of course, does it. We did it. And what, of course, what happened with us, they cited us saying we broke a, a city violation. For, we're soliciting business alongside a road. Yeah, so it's selectively enforced. And we see this in places like Dallas. They typically only selectively enforce these setbacks with people who are alongside the road. They typically only enforce that when it's something that is politically unpopular. And that would be free speech protesting of something political or if somebody is exercising their Second Amendment rights openly. That's right. typically what now we're it, seeing. Is that what you're seeing? Me, are, are some of our people I thought were proponents of the Second Amendment have even been coming after me. I've been, I've been getting it from both sides. People that are proponents say, yeah, well, you're going to ruin it for the rest of us and blah, blah, blah. It's like, ruin it for the rest of us? How? It's already ruined for the rest of us. They say we can open carry, but when we do, this happens. How yeah. have I ruined it for anyone? I couldn't disagree with that attitude more. We have to get in their face. We have to stand up for our civil liberties. As Alex Jones has pointed out, Many times, this is like Rosa Parks refusing to get in the back of the bus. And, and this is like somebody criticizing you, a Second Amendment uh, supporter, a gun owner, criticizing you for doing this, for openly exercising your rights. If we don't push back against this, we are going to lose our rights. We've already got people who, I think many of these people who reported this were probably deathly afraid of seeing somebody with a gun because... The media and the government has been calculatedly reporting this in a manner ca to cause alarm, which is what they charged you with, carrying your, your firearm in a manner to cause alarm. They're reporting about firearms in a manner to cause alarm. So we have to push back against that. We have to exercise our rights or we're going to lose them. Exactly. I mean, it's ridiculous. How can I don't see how someone could be, if someone is carrying a non alarming wet manner and people call how the cops can arrest, if I see someone walking down the road with a pit bull, I don't necessarily like pit bulls, but I ain't going to call the police on them. And if I do, I doubt the cops will infringe on their liberties. That's their right to have have that kind of breed of dog. She so should go the same way for a firearm. If somebody pisses their pants every time they see a gun, that's not the gun owner's problem. That's theirs. And maybe they should seek counseling. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, good luck on your uh, fight there. We hope to hear from you and find out how this is resolved. It's, it's truly amazing when we see the police and municipalities shutting down not only the First Amendment, but also the Second Amendment. And we need to understand some people don't like to see, some people who are conservatives don't like to see protesters out on the street. And some people who are protesting on the left, don't like to see people carrying firearms. We need to understand that we either get all of our freedoms recognized by the government or we'll have none of them recognized. And this is a good example of that, this particular case of yours. Exactly. Well, thank you for talking to us. Uh, good luck with your case. Derek Poe, Golden Triangle Tactical out of Beaumont, Texas. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Well, that's exactly what they want to do. They want to try to get people afraid of guns by making it extremely rare to see anyone with a gun. They want gun owners in the closet. Well, you know what? We need to come out of the closet. We need to stand up for our constitutional rights. We need to proudly display that. And we're going to be covering this story as well as others like it at InfoWars. If you want to continue to follow the story, 
If you want to support the operation, get a subscription to Prison Planet TV. You can share it with up to 10 other people at the same time. It's a great way to keep abreast of what's happening, to get news that other people are not going to cover, and to inform your friends and family about these vital, important issues. If they take away the Second Amendment, they will take away the First Amendment, and they're doing both. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com.